Ford and um, Rivian, they said China is five years ahead. In, yeah. I don't really, in what way is that? Do you agree? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, their vertical integration, at least five years. Um, their electronics, uh, their drive-by wire stuff is really pretty good. I can't put them on the street. Yeah. But they're st- not, no, sorry, auto, like um, self-driving is, is way ahead. It's it's not as good as Tesla, but it's real close. Yeah, I agree. Um, their yeah. um, their their build quality is to die for. Um, yeah, and they can do it faster. The big thing is yeah. we just can't make things move fast. We can't get out of our own way. There's always some lawyer that says you can't do that, or there's some accountant <laughs> that says, "Oh, we got to save money," yeah. or there's some some yeah. engineer that is trying to get ahead. And the way you get ahead is by not doing anything. If yeah. if you uh, if you want to be an executive, all you have to do is say no. You you can't lose. Um, you get whatever whatever you got. You find something that's similar to it and say, oh, we're going to use that. Well, we, can we change it for, nope. Can we, nope. Can we, nope. Uh, so you, get, you, you, you got something that you know is going to work. Yep. It's old. It's not yep. profitable. It could be improved. But if you say no, it'll be better for your career. And uh, that's what it is. There's this little thing, car yep. or career. Okay. Which one do I want? Okay. If it's good for the car, bad for my career. And that's kind of like why a lot of guys don't want to take a chance. Yeah. That's why the new car companies, they're taking chances, but they don't have a combination of experience and um, and success. And you also need to have education and ambition. And they don't usually come in the same package. Yep. So you got this guy and this guy. This guy's supposed to feed this guy, and this guy's supposed to be elevated. And that's the way it's supposed to work. We were talking about Xpeng's CEO with your some of your staff. He said that he thinks that the Chinese automotive industry has way too many car manufacturers. They've got more than 90 EV brands. He said if it needs to go down to no more than seven, and that will happen. Yep. The others will go either consolidate or go bankrupt, and some have already gone bankrupt within the last twelve months. How do you how do you see the um, industry playing out? Obviously, Nissan right now is in a lot of financial trouble. Do you think there's any other car brands that might? In 2019, that was the last time I was in China, and uh, um, I was giving a speech. I have no idea how many people were in the audience, but I knew that there was three uh, uh, balconies. And I couldn't see too far in because the people breathing created a fog. There were thousands of people in here, thousands. <clears throat> I was about to start my speech, and Chairman Xi came on. Chairman Xi, or the the head guy, came over and said, Chairman Xi has a few words he'd like to say before you start your speech. And I said, Okay. <laughs> um, and um, and he came up and he said there were 650 car companies in China. He wanted in two years, he wanted them to go down to 300. Yeah. And in two years after that, he felt that 150 should be the right number. Yeah. Seven car companies in China is not enough because they're so big. It's, it's a huge place. It's a huge, yeah. huge country. But I think that they'll probably wind up with about 20. 20 yeah. car companies in China. In the world, um, the ones that are in Nissan's in trouble. Uh, but if they uh, wind up getting in bed with uh, a company that can be stabilizing them, uh, that would work. Um, Volkswagen is obviously in trouble. There's probably, they're the one that's in the most trouble. Um, Toyota averted um, a strategic calamity by moving um, um, Saku. He's a really smart kid. Well, kid. He's not a kid now, but when I met him, he was a really smart kid. I think um, Stellantis has uh, has some real issues. Um, uh, the, uh, the Koreans, uh, uh, Hyundai and Kia are in good shape. Honda is... Uh, pulling itself uh, up by its bootstraps like Toyota. Yep. Ford, um, GM, both GM and Ford have made a couple of big mistakes, thinking that somehow uh, Trump said when he got in 
you know, drill, baby, drill, and um, electricity's for uh, <laughs> making soup or something. I yeah. don't know. <clears throat> well, he, <laughs> they shouldn't have listened entirely yeah. to that. Now, I think yeah. what they did was they put off or put back some of the things that they were supposed to be working on. Yep. So um, I think everybody is in a state of flux right now. Yep. I don't know. Tesla, uh, you know, they've had their issues, not because of the products that they manufacture, because of the politics that surround uh, Elon. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would stick around. I mean, Elon is uh, helped out. If I was him, I'd go back to my knitting because uh, I am a shareholder. Well, I'm, I'm not a shareholder anymore. But I was, and as a shareholder, if I was still a shareholder, um, yeah, I'd be interested in seeing him making cars and trucks. Not so much, um, yeah, uh, being in politics. But yeah. everybody's got their little um, issues right now. Car market's going to shrink. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, predictions on yeah. what's going to happen, but I think the car market's going to shrink, and it's it has to because. Nobody's having kids. Everybody wants a dog. So there you go. Yeah. If the car market shrinks, which I totally agree with you for a few reasons. One is because when we start to have more automated cars, uh, I think that um, car ownership might decline a bit. But in addition, as you said, demographic changes globally. Um, that means to me that the Chinese are clearly intent on disrupting um, Western auto markets They're, and even their own Western auto market in, within China. So yeah. it's a zero-sum game and the, zero, the, the pie is shrinking and the Chinese are taking more market share. How does that affect companies like, you know, Subaru, Mazda, Mitsubishi, who are selling less, you know, a million cars or less? When you look at Xpeng's latest um, quarterly results, they're saying the reason that their loss was the lowest ever and their gross margins are the highest ever because they're making more cars. They're making twice as many cars. Right. So the cost has gone down. What happens to the... The other OEMs, when their costs, when they're making less cars, wouldn't the cost go up per unit? They do, and that's why they disappear. I mean, at one time there was a uh, hundred car companies in uh, in the United States. Yeah. Yep. Some of them amalgamated. Ford bought Lincoln. Ford bought uh, a bunch of them. General Motors. That is, that's that was the business model. They bought all these little losing companies and glued them into one big company. But even now, there's no such thing as a Pontiac or an Oldsmobile. Yeah. Uh, and they're gone. Yeah. Uh, and so you're looking at this shrinking. And the same with Chrysler. They used to have a thing called a Plymouth. All these cars disappeared. Yeah. And even if they were brought into the same same family, you couldn't you couldn't sustain them. They disappeared. And that's what's going to happen. In in yeah. say ten years from now, who would you who would you say would be the three biggest automakers in the world? Like right now, it's Volkswagen, Toyota. Do you think that potentially BYD and Geely could be could go up there? BYD for sure. I think BYD, um, Geely, Geely is pretty big, but I don't think they'd be. I think Toyota. I think it'd be BYD, Toyota, and um, you know, it's hard. To, it, it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, it depends yeah. a lot on. Um, I, I would have probably said in ten years Tesla. Would be uh, would be in there, uh, but I don't know. This was a little bump in the road for Tesla. Um, hard to say. It depends on it depends on a lot of different things. But number one will be BYD. No question about it. Yeah, number one. Yeah, it'll be the biggest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because they're vertically integrated. They make buses. They make they make everything. They yeah. make their own batteries. They 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 invent stuff. They're not hampered by. Uh, any any financial needs or whatever yeah yeah they're 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 huge yeah i don't understand how they're able to make so many models it just seems like there's a new model every week it's because crazy. they got a shitload of engineers they and do. any engineers with well I, like i said i was training thousands of them at a crack i probably trained more than i've ever seen at any car company yeah i mean they they these guys were serious they were serious yeah. and and we would have Accountants saying, well, wait a minute. My calculations show that we should only have two engineers. And now you've got 18. What yeah. can we do to cut down to two? Let's save money. There's only one place you make money. Only one place you make money. And that's in engineering. Yep. If you got a bad design, 
I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. You try and um, fix things on the floor. You can't win. Yeah. If I've got four parts and you got 18 parts, I'm going to win. I'm yeah. going to have the best quality. Yeah. 18 parts means 18 chances for a failure. I mean, at, but you, it's very difficult sometimes to, you can't convince people of these things. There's always a cost cutting measure right at the beginning of a program, right at the beginning. And what do they cut? Well, look at all those engineers. Let's cut them. And when I went to BYD, it was Sandy Sun. Oh, sorry, not Sandy Sun. Sandy, do you know where we can find more engineers? Why can't we bring engineers here from the United States? They they couldn't get enough engineers because when I gave my first presentations, who was it to? They're top people. I mean, I actually met Chairman Xi. I never met Trump. Never met Bush. True. Never met. Uh, I didn't want to meet Biden. I mean, I, I mean, I've never met anybody really, but I met Chairman Xi because yeah. even though he was coming up on the screen, he was over in the next room. He was in the green room where they. So at the end of the day, um, these guys at the top really quite get it. They don't. They're not. They're not stupid. And when I gave my presentations to all these big companies, the the biggest guy. Okay, the biggest success story we had was an automotive. It was appliances. We took Mydia from number three to number one in the world for making appliances. How did wow. that happen? Yeah. It happened because I, I gave a speech in front of four guys, four guys that were owning or running Mydia. And I said, this is what we can do. And I showed them a couple of examples. And the next thing you know, we were over there for a long time. And most of our time wasn't spent with automotive. It was spent with Mydia. They, and they implemented things overnight. Sandy, it's been yeah. great talking to you. Thanks very much. I appreciate it, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks you too, mate. See ya.